Today we're going to look at one of the technologies used by your internet provider to bring you fiber optic connections inside an apartment, an old apartment that has been rewired for fiber. This is a very common way of getting it in to the building. This is Invisalight. It's a fiber optic cable it is used by internet providers, phone companies, etc. to get fiber optic into uh, existing buildings because it's much thinner than conventional fiber optic cable. It's still the same fiber optic cable can handle up to, I think it's 50, gig, 50 gigabytes of data. It's got the same fiber inside, it's just much thinner. And this is what is used in apartments, etc., where their existing wiring, it's not possible to, to add fiber optic other than to go surface mounted. So in buildings where there's conduit that goes from the electrical room to each suite, then we can just fish the, the, the conventional clear curve through the conduit. But in other buildings where there is no conduit, like where there's a riser cable that goes from one floor up to the next, the preferred method is to use this type of fiber optic installation where they run it through the halls and they basically drill a hole right over top of the door and bring this in and then this, this fiber optic Invisalight uh, fiber optic is then glued down to the surface of the wall in corners and follows around the ceiling and down the wall to a terminal which is where this spool normally lives and the reason I have it is because in an apartment that I was working in the idiots painting you know when someone moved out the idiots painting uh, for the new tenant cut the fiber so then we had to rip it out and redo it and this adds expense and generally the expense gets passed on to the new customer just because it's not our fault that some idiot ripped out the cable no, no different than if you uh, rip out the cable from your house and expect to get billed to reinstall it anyway uh, this was what was left over after I did a repair in this particular case I was able to uh, relocate the terminal and pull some of this back off the wall I didn't have to redo it I was able to uh, lift some of the fiber back a few feet back and reattach the uh, terminal a little bit further down the wall saving the, the client the expense of having to redo the whole uh, the whole job which ultimately I'm sure he would have gone back to the rental company and said hey your guys damaged this and I got a bill for it so pay up anyway I figured I would show this stuff off to show you guys that it is not as fragile as some people would like you to think uh, this stuff is actually pretty tough and I'll show you it, it's tough and it's fragile at the same time so let's first of all look at what is this stuff how does it work well it's essentially glass and a laser light is shined through the glass and I can demonstrate that by putting on an optical this is what uh, we call these a ruby red it's a fault finder a fault detector and basically what it does is it shines a red laser which can either flash or be constant down the fiber so I put my fault tester or my ruby red as it's called onto the end of the fiber it will shine the light through the fiber and you'll see that the light is actually appearing at this end and the, the reason it's showing up here is because it's broken here now the fiber optic itself is very tough I can pull on this thing I can pull on this quite hard actually and it's very difficult for me to break it as you can see it is not breaking I can pull on this with all my might and I still can't break it I'm pulling on this with all my strength and it won't break it's tough it is really hard to break this stuff through lateral force pulling constantly. So when you're pulling this through a wall, for example, some of the guys worry about, oh, it's going to break. It's not going to break. You can push with all your might. It will break, however, very easily if you bend it beyond its maximum or minimum bending radius. For example, as you'll notice here, watch what happens when I bend this to the point it will snap and you'll see the light will go out here and it'll actually show up. Geez, that's left a mark on my hand. I was pulling that so hard. But if I just continue to bend this, it will break and you'll see it. You watching? Here, let me get a closer up shot of this. So as I bend it, you'll first start to see it start to show up. Right in the bend here, you can see it starting to glow and then it'll snap. 
there I just snapped the glass this is also good for fault finding if you've got a if you've got a no light at the end of your fiber what we do is we put the we put the laser the ruby red on at the equipment end and then just take a walk back and look especially if we're dealing with Invisalight it's easy to find where it's broken it's usually broken at a corner like where it goes around a corner like for example picture this being the corner of a wall and it's, it's going around the corner like that and then someone comes along and they hit it you know with something even that it's hard I mean it takes a lot If we look at the dent of the bench here, I'm actually denting the bench. I haven't damaged the fiber yet. I've dented the bench. Let's see what, what, I, what I have to do to actually break this fiber by impact. A bigger screwdriver perhaps? It's still not breaking it. You can see that I've dented the edge of the uh, of the bench, but I haven't broken the fiber. I need to find something to bend this over that's sharper. How about how about this plastic edge of this tape? Okay, that's a pretty sharp edge there. If I strike this, will I break it? Okay, I did, but I also cut it. Okay, so so basically, this stuff is pretty tough out in the field. If we want to look at what the makeup of this is. I don't have my splicing tools here to remove the, uh, the actual the actual sheath the proper way. So we'll try just using. Okay, well that did it. It kind of I, I did break it at the same time though. But I, I just wanted to try to remove the sheath. But I did a bit of it here. We'll just see if I can get a bit more of the sheath off of it here without uh, breaking the glass. So you can see what the glass looks like. Okay, here's the glass itself. So this is what's under this Teflon. This is Teflon. This, And incidentally, the, the bare fiber here, this is dangerous stuff. Uh, you could stick yourself with this because it is glass. You could stick yourself with this piece of glass and it could lodge in your skin and usually it's not going to cause a problem it's just going to cause discomfort you'll feel like you've got a sliver and uh, it will usually calcify over the course of see the bare glass itself is, is actually quite uh, is actually quite brittle but uh, it will calcify cause you some discomfort for a few days and then typically won't be a problem. I've been stuck by fiber a few times in my fingers. It's not pleasant when it happens, but you know, it does happen. You try to be careful with this stuff. If you were to get it into a vein though, if you were to stab yourself with it, think of this like a needle. Okay. I'm not going to obviously push it this direction because I don't want to stick myself with it. It's, it's glass, but think of that like a needle. And that could go into your into your skin. And if it were to get into a vein, the fiber would end up either lodging in your lungs and causing a pulmonary embolism or make it to your brain and cause a stroke. So this stuff can be dangerous and needs to be treated with respect. I'm just gonna get some uh, tape here just to protect it. I don't want I don't want any loose pieces of fiber on my uh, bench here because when they're loose pieces of fiber, they can be a little more hazardous. So what we try to do is we try to make sure that uh, if we're going to break this stuff, at least we're going to have a way to contain it. So I'll, I'll break it onto a piece of, of tape just so that uh, we have a place to contain this. So the fiber itself is, is really quite fragile and it doesn't take much to break the actual glass. What it doesn't have is protective sheath doesn't take much at all if I if I bend this slightly if I just I'll just stick it onto the there you see I just broke it I just broke the end off it if I just stick it again and just give it a bit of a push you'll see that it will it will break 
and now it won't do it. But I did break the end off it. There's a piece right there. You can see it. There's still some. There's a. There is still another coating on the edge of this this glass. It's, it's hard to see, but there's actually another coating. You can just barely see it right here. See the coating? There's another coating. So there's there's this. This is a Teflon coating. Then there's another coating on the glass, and then there's the bare glass. Let's we'll see if I can just take some more of this off. See if I can get some of that that. Uh, Okay, so now you can see the coating on here, right? The edge, this, this coating actually gets scraped off. When we apply the connectors, we have to not only remove the uh, focus, we not only have to remove the, the Teflon, we also have to remove this other coating that you can see, which is another protective coating. But that actually gets removed as well with another tool that will actually scrape that off, and I don't know whether I can do it with these snips or not or whether they're going to be whether it's going to break it likely will break if I try to do this but you can see the coating that has to come off so when we apply our connectors we scrape off this coating and, and, and sometimes it breaks there's a piece that I broke there but we scrape off the coating and uh, clean it and then put a connector on the end of it and that's how we deal with fiber optics and when we're working with scraps like this we typically will put down some a strip of tape like this on our bench if we're working on a, on a workbench so that any pieces that, that that break will get contained and they won't fly around because it is hazardous waste and any scraps when I when I use my cleaver my, my cleaver actually has a little little reservoir so when it cuts the fiber it takes the clipping and it puts it into a, a little little bin which then gets emptied into a sharps container and uh, disposed of safely because you don't want pieces of this stuff lying around um, it's been recorded with other companies that uh, you know techs that aren't so careful with uh, dealing with fiber uh, will end up uh, leaving their scraps lying around where say somebody's dog could get into it and ingest it and it would not be good for the dog. It's actually killed some animals. So when you're dealing with this stuff, you really want to make sure that uh, any scraps that you have are picked up. And if you're working on a workbench like I have been here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm just going to run over the workbench and just pick up anything that may have, that I may have dropped just to make sure that I'm not leaving any scraps of fiber behind. That's the best work practice for when you're, when you're dealing with this stuff. It's just to clean up. Anyway, um, I was just going to do this little short video to show what this Invisalite stuff was like. Maybe I'll show you guys how, to, how we apply it. I do have an Invisalite uh, gun here with just a little tiny bit of glue left in it just for this demonstration so I can show you guys how we go about placing this stuff when we're installing it. So got all the scraps picked up there. Now I can dispose of this. This is the applicator. The glue comes in these tubes. This one here is pretty much done. Pretty much empty. And uh, I don't think there's much left in the end of this one, but basically we put the tube onto the the gun and then put a tip on the end kinda like a hypodermic syringe and then glue is pushed down through and out through the applicator we'll go, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna throw some of this down on the wall here trying to figure the best place to do it probably just put some in the corner because I'll be removing it after the fact but this is just to give you an idea of how we go about applying this stuff in the field. So let's just say for example the back corner beside that record hanging on the wall is uh, where I'm going to bring the, the fiber down. So normally I would work with the green painters tape but I don't have any green painters tape so black tape will have to suffice for this demo. So basically what I do 
is as I'm prepping, I'll get my tape set up. And that's used to hold the fiber in place until the glue dries. So what you do is once you're once you've got your fiber laid out, you take your glue gun and you apply a bead of glue across the ceiling or down the wall or whatever. And then you put up your your fiber and you just glue it down. Just like that, and then every few feet you put your tape up to hold the fiber in place. Put your tape up, that'll hold the fiber in place until it dries. And once it's dried, this completely blends into the background and you don't even see it. It's messy when you're dealing with this stuff and putting it up. Some of the guys like to wear gloves. I find gloves are quite often makes things even worse because the glue gets all over the gloves and then your fingers stick together and then it makes it even harder to put the Invisalight up. But once it's installed correctly and put through the corners and down the walls, the stuff completely disappears in a room. You don't notice it and it can be painted over. Once it's done, it's done. And the only thing you have to be careful is don't catch it or snag it or, or pick at it. And uh, the stuff should be there, you know, for the rest of the life of the building, unless it's damaged, which doesn't happen a lot. But as in the case of that, that donor roll that I just showed you, well, that's exactly what happened when the building management was in cleaning up an apartment for a new tenant to move in. The guys just painted over everything they actually painted over the box as well anyway there it is Invisalight once it's up it's up you don't notice it it's bringing gigabit plus speed to people in apartments thanks for watching